Stop, I'm starting. No, no, it's all right. We're just two climbing steps. Okay. No, somebody wants to take pictures. That's their business. Okay. This monument for the camp of Majdanek was put up by the Polish authorities in 1949. Um, I haven't heard as yet a good explanation of what all the symbolism of what the what's on there. There's been different suggestions of what it might be, but one thing we do know. If you, where I stand, you see there's a slope, and it goes down, and then there's staircases going up where, for the first time now, I'm seeing that there's barricades, they don't even let you climb it, and they don't let you climb over there either. Um, what is strange about the rock formation that comes out jettisons from both sides, something very strange about it. Normally, if you would build a mountain of a uh, of rocks, you would expect that the larger, wider rocks would be on the bottom, and then they would somehow build, and they'd come smaller and smaller as it goes up. Here it's precisely the opposite. And the understanding of the artist was that you go down to Majdanek. Anybody who was here, 1940, 41, 42, um, there was to climb out was almost impossible. You try climbing out from these two sides and you see you're not going to make it. It became almost an impossibility. But right towards the end of this rock formation, at the end, there's a slight crack in the, in the wall where if you squeeze a little bit, you can get through. And the idea was that there were a handful of people who did survive Majdanek. So for most, it was a dead end. And what is a dead end, literally and figuratively, is what we see straight ahead in front of us. A little off to the right, you see the crematorium, right? Yeah. That's the, with the big chimney on top, with the chimney on top. That is the only crematorium here in Majdanek, and it's real. The building to my right, this uh, white building here, was the villa of the commandant, of the commander, who referred to the chimney over there as Himmelstrasse, the road to heaven. And by the way, he was right. It was the road to heaven. Shara Shamayim, from there. What was his name? I'm trying to remember myself uh, what the commandant said. If I'll look it up, I'll, I'll get the name. Okay. I don't have it in my head for a second. But I just want you to be impressed about the fact that as I look at the panoramic view here, it's part of Lublin. and this side, this is Lublin. So the talk that if we would have only known that we would have done something and opposed this, maybe for Treblinka made sense, but not for Majdanek. Because a block away from the last houses of Majdanek was the city of Lublin. So you could see it. You can smell it. You can see. Uh, you can notice everything that's going on here. So this was in public view. Public view. Now, what's the round-shaped building to the? Are we getting there? Okay. Are we going to visit there? In Majdanek itself, it was set up originally as a prison for Russian soldiers. The Germans were at it. The first, first they signed an agreement with Russia. They were on the same side. But then the uh, Germans attacked the Soviet Union, and Soviets fought back. So originally there were many Soviet prisoners who, f who were caught in you know, captivity, and they were sent here to Majdanek. It doesn't mean they were executed. They were sent here, and there was forced labor you know, from them. But eventually it was one of the stations that would become an extermination camp for Jews as well. So it has the facility, the capacity for extermination, but it wasn't the only thing that was done here. It was also a concentration camp. Unlike um, Belgitz, which or uh, Treblinka, they were purely for one purpose only, to kill Jews, to kill Jews. So you take a look, you have barracks. These barracks are all original. And 
where you have green, there was not a blade of grass here in 1940, not a blade of grass, but you had rows and rows and rows of barracks. And each section is called a feld, a sade, F-E-L-D, a feld. So only one feld survives, and we're going to walk through it. But all of it is, you just have to multiply everything we're going to see by, you know, 10, 20, 30. You see this place housed many, many prisoners at the same time. From the crematorium, they burnt, the, which was, means they burnt the bodies after gassing, and we'll see where the gassing took place. The ashes were thrown into a pit behind that building. After the war, what the Polish government did was they scooped up the ashes and put it all in a pit, a very, very large pit. These are ashes that still have bone fragments in them, and they built this big rotunda on top of it as a memorial. So that's where that is, and that is also a very moving place because only 120 to 130,000 Jews perished here, only. So we talk about 900,000 in Treblinka, and we talk about a million and a half in Auschwitz. So only, only, only 120,000, maybe 130,000 Jews. But others perished here, but they weren't Jewish. They were Soviet prisoners and dissidents and so on. But, but yeah, gypsies we're going to see also in Auschwitz, by the way. And the crematorium also. Everybody. Everybody. Whoever they killed. So uh, this is uh, an idea, and this, furthermore, so now we're not going to be able to go down and walk up the steps. But I've walked up the steps, and it looks like a staircase. Each step is like twice the height of a normal staircase. You have to work very hard to lift your feet to, to, uh, to get up that staircase. And that was done deliberately. That to get out of uh, uh, Maidanek was an effort, was quite an effort. And it was almost impossible, almost impossible. Now, what some of the high school kids do is they would walk over and there's a staircase on the other side, a normal staircase that takes you down to the field. And then they'll walk that whole distance to the opening where I'm pointing. There's a guard, right? You see the guard tower? So that's the, really the edge of Maidanek, the, ent the entrance to Maidanek. We're not going to do this. The ground is a little soft. I, I don't want anybody tripping. I don't want you falling into mud. And there's no big dilla making this walk. It's the second walk that I'm going to give you the option where I'm going to walk after we finish, after we finish the uh, that section. So I will tell you where I will pick up and walk. And those who want to go back to the bus, the bus is going to be there to drive you all the way up this hill to the rotunda area. And that's where we're going to pick up. So anybody's going to want the bus, we'll go back on the bus. Those who want to work with me, will walk with me. But now we're going to go on the bus and just take us in two minutes to that entrance. But the question was, where are the railroad tracks? There are no railroad tracks here. So how did they get here? They hitched? How did they get here? The railroad tracks were three kilometers away. Railroad tracks, tracks. No, trucks. What are you talking about, trucks? They, marched, they made them walk. They, the Jews they made them the walk of course. from the city. And the truth is, we will see on Friday, on, on Sunday, when we were in the Auschwitz area, that that was the same situation in Auschwitz until it was less um, a productive or, a, a, you know, a, a, what's Not the word? Efficient. Not efficient. It was less efficient. So then they built the connection track all the way uh -huh. into Birkenau. So that was like a, a subsequent innovation that they did to make things more efficient. An upgrade. Yeah. An upgrade, yeah. But they didn't do that here because the Russians, you have to realize when the Russians came, so Germany started losing the war on the Eastern Front. And this is the Eastern Front. This is the most Eastern Poland we have now. So they took over by now. So anybody that was here was freed by the Russians already early in the game, 1943, certainly by 44. And the war was still going on. Western Front. Auschwitz is on the Western Front. Lodge is on the Western Front. So those ghettos are still happening. Warsaw was caught in the middle. So Warsaw is 1943 when they liquidate the uh, the ghetto and they're sent to Treblinka. And then Treblinka is over in 43. That's it. That's the way it works. And furthermore, when the Russians, when the Germans rather, entered into Russian territory, so you're familiar with Babi Yar? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Babi Yar is just in Kiev. It's one of just one of many 
So there, there were no concentration camps or extermination camps. There, they simply dug pit ditches, they, who, who's the they? We, yes. right? And they will ask to strip, line up, and shot, you know, mow down. In, in, and, and this took place in Poland too, but it took place before they had all this fully in operation. And we're going to see this in different places in the de in the forest. So they have the actions, right? The uh, action, yeah. Action. Right. So so that's why here in Lublin and Belgius, which is southeast of here, are the most eastern of the extermination camps. But further east, there was mass killings, but not this. This is already with a lot of seichel. Yeah. Were there any other buildings that were up yes. that were not here now? Up that are not here were now? Plenty. The whole, yeah, the whole place is, was filled with buildings. The whole place was full of buildings. We're going to see a place that maybe 10% of the buildings exist and 90% have been destroyed. And they've taken great pains to keep the buildings that the wood should not uh, deteriorate and so on. They give it chemical treatment. It has a little bit of a smell to it, some chemical smell, because of what they're doing. So, Ralph, how come those did survive? Those, the ones that did? Some survived because they were workers. There wasn't they were, some people were, had tasks, had, had tasks that the Nazis needed. So they were given tasks to do, and uh, they were lucky enough to survive. And if somebody had a task that they need, they got food. I mean, it, they didn't get a luxurious supper like we got last night, but they got some food. How long did it take the Germans to build the building? No, it didn't take long. No, it didn't take long, yeah. On the way up, on the way halfway, there's not a mention of the Jews. Right, because the Poles always saw the Jews here as Polish citizens. We're going to see this in Plashov, outside of Krakow. They, they, this, they didn't want to admit that what happened here happened to Jews per se. They know that there were Jews involved. They know that. It took a long time for the Polish authorities to distinguish between that which happened to Polish citizens, and it was no picnic here for Polish citizens at all, and that which happened to the Jewish population of Poland. At first, the the idea was that they're Poles, they're Poles, so we'll memorialize them as Poles. So there's no Jewish symbolism in these kind of memorials. What do you think with the pr the percentage of Jews here? Um, it's most probably no more than a quarter. A quarter I said 120,000, 120,000 parish are Jews, but the many, many others, okay. the majority of people who perish in Medanic are not Jews. Okay. And another thing, you think that the ghetto of Lublin that we're going to see this evening, that's the best place that they're going to send them a few blocks away to perish here. No, 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 no. They weren't sent here. They were sent to Belgians. I mean, the deception was part of the process of extermination. So people in Lublin would catch wind of this, that from the Lublin ghetto they're being sent to be gassed here. You know, they could have been trouble for the Nazis. Who built the, the what? The Nazis the, or the Poles? The, 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 the Germans. No, you are going to see that a place like Auschwitz was originally a Polish army camp, but then the Germans took it over and they built second stories to each building and made it into a, a, a the camp that it became, Auschwitz. But it was built. Here, this was built as a prison camp by the Germans for, for Russian soldiers, essentially. Uh -huh. That's how it starts. Probably using slave labor. Oh, everything was slave labor. Everything was slave. Yeah. There's no reference to Jews. Right. We have to offend here, offend the hair, but that's the, that's you have to understand. That was their policy. A quarter of the people were Jews. A quarter of the approximately. But I know the number is 120,000 of Jews. I don't know the exact number of how many survived, but there were survivors because there were people from Maidanik who spoke at the Eichmann trial and others there. You said it was only took about 22 SS guards to run the whole place. Uh I said that about uh, Treblinka, Treblinka specifically. Okay. Here there may have been more. There may have been more. Uh, just before we go back to the bus, so I, I want to um, read to you uh, my, I always mention him with great um, uh, honor and dignity, fellow who I just listened to him carefully when he guided students of my yeshiva, Uriel Feinerman, who then became the guide of guides. Yad Vashem hired him to teach guides how to guide in Poland. But he, and he stopped doing it for yeshiva high schools, except for yeshiva Ner Tamid in Chashmanoim, because he liked us, and he kept doing it. That was like his pet project. 
So the yeshiva is called Ner Tamid, and Tamid is an acronym, Torat Moreno Yosef Dov, it's memory of our great Rebbe of Soloveitchik. He told me that after so many visits to Maidanik, there's a certain attrition that kicks in. And, you know, for you, it's your first time. Some of you, maybe a second time. But for most, it's their first time and only time. But for him, it was his hundredth time. And, um, you know, you lose it a little bit. It's almost like a person works in the Hever Kadisha. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're not all broken up every time you see a met, a dead person, because you're doing this for a living. You see five a day or more. So you come to here to Maidanik. All right, it's again, it's another group. So he asked me if I can compose a tefillah for the Moraderech, for the guide, to rejuvenate some of the original enthusiasm. I say this in a sense of, of, of doing this right, as if it was the first time. Because you do something the first time, it's one thing. You do it a hundredth time, it's something else. So this is what I came up with, and you'll even hear the name of the yeshiva uh, embedded, in, because it was done for him guiding the kids in the yeshiva. El male rachamim ribon haolamim. Sharei shamayim betach lehalot nerot timidim. Hadricheni benetiv hayosher hayashar ki baderech emuna bacharti adunai svatai tiftach utihi yadcha leazreni. Letziduk hadin yatati. Oi, ma ayom venora. Dayan ha'emet berachti al kulam kedoshei hashoah. So, okay, let's go back to the bus, and it's going to drive us to the opening, and we'll start there in about uh, five minutes. Immediate, don't start looking at signs, please. Make it immediately back to the bus. Some of the barracks remained. Yeah. How can some remain in the majority were destroyed? They were destroyed with time, and they fell apart, and uh, these they did made a concerted effort. That's a. Uh, the original. Yeah, I put my phone on the other side to come through. See if you can do it with your camera. Let's see if we can find a bigger opening. Here, no. Coming up in a minute. No, no, here, here. Wait, 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 wait. Come. Well, the 
first time I ever heard him speak to you was in this film. Oh, really? I was on the bus. No, no. I heard who was no, like, no, it's in front of you. Uh, and on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. He, he taught me as a Hebrew. Okay. At the university? Talks to you? Yeah, he really had that. Those who want to go back to the bus, now is the chance to. on the wall.
kill the heat. Just because you're Jewish, I'm Jewish. It's unbelievable. Eh?
three eagles. <coughs> No, uh, uh, uh. Guarding system. This was to prevent, obviously to prevent from escaping. Anybody wants to pass? Just a little bit. What? You want to go on? Okay. Okay. Are you okay?
look how close it is to the city. It's unbelievable. Everybody, we're going to the crematorium. Well, where are we sleeping tonight? Lublin in a hotel, the Mercure also, another part of the